this is motherfucking internal affairs. All I want to do is fucking kill him. If I had a chance, I'd fucking kill him. And then the exam went on. She thanked me for my time. I left. I drove down to Bloomfield, got a sandwich at fucking Bialante's diner, deli, or whatever you want to call it. Drove home. Fucking midnight. Knock on my fucking door. I have eight cops at my door. From three different towns. Because of this? Because of this. This is gonna hurt. It's time 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 for for the Suffering Podcast. And uh, the drinking took a... I started hitting the bottle really hard. And, um... Yeah, you had to probably drink extra because you were numb half the time. Yeah. Those two years, 2012 to 2014, I was really, really bad, out of control. And uh, Christine was like, you need help. You need help. Christine so, is your fiancé? My fiancé. Okay. She was like, she was the one I was having an affair with, so I'll just put it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, at least something good came out were committed. Out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're committed. Still committed. So uh, she's like, you need help. So uh, I was looking around, looking around, looking around, and I found Dr. Steph through the PBA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started seeing him in 2014, and he was like, you need help. You need help. And uh, I got diagnosed with a PTSD. And um, I remember when we when we were in group together, I was trying to beg you, like, bro, you got to go. You got to retire, man. You can't do this no yeah. more. I was trying. I think that's just when I got in there. Yeah. But so, what did we do after Dr. Steph meetings, though? We drank. We, we, we drank. went out and we had a couple of drinks. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> Smitty, Smitty, you were there from the very beginning with, like, Andy and Todd and all yeah. those guys, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, was yeah, it I started- Jose... Jose and uh, Jose Brito. Yeah. Yeah. All the, all the yeah. original guys. All the original guys, yeah. yeah. I started off at the, I would imagine, the end of 2014. Right. These guys we're talking about here, I think it already moved on. Yeah. And yeah. there was an Asian guy, too. I can't remember. I can't remember. He was yeah. from Passaic. Passaic. Passaic, yeah. yeah. A couple of those Newark guys. Uh, Will, they came in afterwards. Yeah, yeah Billy the, the and stuff. S- uh, second round of uh, misfits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the first one. First one was pretty bad, but the first one. Did you, you did you come down to Piscataway with us that one time? Nah, no, man. we because that was the first time. I always say that group was the first time I felt normal again. We were out together, and of course we were drinking, and um, we sat at a we sat at a table outside at this restaurant. And there's there's still a picture of us to this day of the original group, and I, that's why I'm trying to think whether you were there or not. And um, that Pete there, yeah, I remember Pete. So he, um, that was the first time I felt normal being around wow. anybody, and even if we were drinking, even if we were unhealthy behavior, at least we trusted each other. Because that's what that's what that brain injury does to you. That's, well, that's the stress. whole thing with post traumatic stress, and and what group did for us is we got a bunch of like minded dented people, mm-hmm. put them all together in a room, and we could talk to each other. Oh, it's Do you know with 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 PTSD, you can't talk to just anybody. No. Yeah. So you you start going this downward spiral with your job, because it was it was starting oh. when I met you first. Oh yeah, I went which was downward spiral. Two thousand thirteen. Right. That I met you. I I started not giving a fuck. Calling out sick, using my vacation time, burning sick time. I uh, started pretty much drinking heavily at work. Nobody, uh, like you asked the question, like, did anybody realize I was drinking at work? Probably, but nobody confronted me until the tail end of my career. And once they confronted you, what happened? It was like, you need to go to rehab. You need to go to rehab or we're going to fire you. So. What was your reaction to that? I was like, fuck you. I'm not going to rehab. Well, there's a there's a middle story in there. <laughs> God, now might be the time for the uh, the screen. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You made some you made some comments to some other of- officers. I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. There's uh there's there's really one IA guy. <laughs> there's always that one IA guy. <laughs> he, you know what? He was pretty cool in the beginning. He was. A, I, I'll give it to him. He was a good cop. He was a good sergeant, but then there was a political change in town, mm. and he played. He went that route. Yeah, there were, there, you had some serious political problems yeah. in that department. Yeah. So uh, we went from a chief to a director, mm-hmm. and uh, he started sucking the director's dick. I, I don't Choose know. what happens. That's a, it's not the, not the political term for it, but you. I know it's a little yeah, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a law enforcement term. He was <laughs> supervisory <laughs> filleting. Yeah, so uh, he gets put up into IA, and he starts going after guys. And for some reason, I thought I was cool with him. I hit his radar. Had a couple car accidents. Drinking on the job, probably related. 
Uh, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so uh, he suspended me a couple of times for nonsense, you know, failure to do DMS training. Uh, DMS training? What is that? Oh, yeah. That, that was probably after you. That, That's after that you. Came, yeah. That came. That was a it's pain on, in the ass. Yeah, online training. Okay. okay. Instead of going and in, sitting into a conference room for training, you did it on a computer. But you know what's funny? Those things, those DMS, power DMS, they used to call it. Power DMS. Power DMS. They, they used to, you'd have to sit there for like an hour and watch this thing. Then they'd talk about how production was down. Right. <laughs> yeah, you guys aren't going out writing enough tickets. Because you know, I'm sitting here for two hours a shift reading this power DMS mm-hmm. shit. So you you go off the rails. I went off the rails bad. You went off the rails. And to prove, we actually have something for you to show <laughs> our audience how bad you went off the rails. Drew, you got that thing I sent you? <laughs> We went off the rail. You went off the rails so bad. Worse, you know, there's very few cops in the world that go off the rails as bad as you. And there it is. So let me explain Thomas a little bit. Schmittler. This is a track alert. So this is what's called a track alert. You'll hear them on TV shows as like a bolo given out. It's, it's sent out to all the different departments and um, just kind of like th- this one is is for an officer safety. It's a threat alert. It's a threat alert because you had made some comments to some people that you were might have hurt hurt them. I made mean, comment too. I was that's that all came out of a fit for duty exam. <laughs> Did you go up to Oakland? I went down to uh, it was in Morristown to this fucking bitch, <laughs> and uh, I guess tell I, us what you really think of it. I was. I was drunk when I went for fifth for duty. And uh, she asked me, you know, a bunch of questions and how I feel I was being treated at the department. I was like, what is fucking, this is motherfucking internal affairs. All I want to do is fucking kill him. If I had a chance, I'd fucking kill him. And then the exam went on. She thanked me for my time. I left. I drove down to Bloomfield, got a sandwich at fucking Bialante's. Diner, deli, or whatever you want to call it. Drove home. Fucking midnight. <laughs> knock on my fucking door. I have eight cops at my door. From three different towns. Because of this? Because of this. I had no idea that went out. Really? <laughs> it says, well, any officer who comes in contact with the above individual, please use caution. The <laughs> funny thing letters. is, is you didn't know that came out, but we, we knew did. that came out. <laughs> <laughs> is this Schmitty? <laughs> But this is this is a good example. But look at the picture. Oh, the, the that is, that's my DL. That picture's bad, dude. That, that is a bad picture, man. You you look like well, that's the skinhead that version of Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this. I wanted to bring this up for a very. It's not to embarrass you. It's it's to show everybody how bad this disease is. Right. How bad? How far down the rabbit hole you can go? You were this functioning guy. You were a good cop. You've been through all these different <clears throat> things, and this is. Where it ended up. Where this, it is, get you. this is where it ended up. Yeah. Now, after this, where did it go? I uh, had the cops at my door at midnight. They wanted all my guns. They said, you need to go to the hospital. I was like, I ain't going. <laughs> They're like, you got to go. I look at my fiance. She's like, yeah. I'm a cop. I know the drill. She's probably at wit's end. She doesn't oh, know what to do. Fucking dogs barking. Well, she doesn't know what to do with you because you're a mess. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. You know. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll go. Uh, I caved in. What, they want you to go for like a voluntary commitment? Yeah. So uh, I went, went went to fucking Newton, sat in a room. They have hospitals all the way up there? Yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> it's like a little farmhouse. Yeah. You got one, one doctor. It's, it's, on, it's not even a doctor. Bells. It's just John. He's, the, He's also <laughs> doubles as the veterinarian. <laughs> and the pharmacist. And the mailman. So, uh, so I'm speaking to these doctors. And they're looking at They got this bunch of fucking paperwork from this fifth of duty doctor. And I don't know what she wrote up, but they're flipping through it. And they're like, you need to be committed. I was like, what? I need to be committed. For psych? Yeah. Yeah. So they sent me down to this place called Carrier Clinic. I spent eight days there. And uh, was it was Carrier Clinic a rehab facility? No, it was a psych facility. Uh, and they were even worse because I've been in that. Uh, it was a psych facility. I was down there for eight days, and I'm calling Doc Steph like every day. Mm. Like, Doc, you gotta get me the fuck out of here. There's people down there fucking eating crayons and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, eating crayons, eat- stuffing them up in their nose. Crayons. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah. I was like, you gotta get me out of here. So, uh, 
my PBA president, my state delegate, come down with my with the PBA attorney, and they're like, "Here's the deal: if you go to rehab, they won't press any charges against you." Oh, they got you now. They won't fire you. They'll let you. They'll let you walk away. No issues. No nothing. So I'm like, "Fuck you! I ain't going to rehab. Like you gotta go. Mm. It's just you only out." So I was like. You had no more cards to play. I was done. Yeah. My money was gone. I had no, no more bets on the table. I was like, fuck it. I'll go. So they sent me to Florida house and uh Yeah. Down to Florida. I, I was very resistant to going to Florida house. Spent ninety days down there. I treat you know what? And I, I didn't I didn't do the program. I fucking treated it like a vacation. Yeah. Do you do you, do you uh couldn't wait to get out to get your next drink. Oh, I came home day. I came home on St. Paddy's Day. Oh, that was, that was my release date. Oh my gosh! Poor timing on their part. <laughs> you know, did you go in there drunk? No, I was sober when I went in. You were sober when you I was. In, I was in carrier clinics. So I couldn't drink. Oh man! Oh man! Now, what was what was the, your resist? If you had to pinpoint something about your resistance to work in the program, what, what do you think it would be? You just weren't ready. I didn't think I had a problem. Mm. I really think up until really, yeah, <laughs> really. That guy, that guy was functioning. That guy right there was a functioning alcoholic. When I heard about this, knowing you, and, and what year? When did this come out? Is there a date September, on September? Uh, no, January seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. So I had known you for about I would say five and a half years at this point, right? I had never. I was so surprised at this. I'm like, Schmitty, there's no way. There's no way that this this is true. To be honest with you, when it came out, I didn't even recognize a face. Yeah. <laughs> and then I read the name. I'm like, how many Thomas Schmittlers are there? I don't know, man. That looks like somebody that just ate 50 dicks <laughs> <laughs> right after he killed somebody. <laughs> but you, I, I was so shocked because every time I have had contact with you, every single time, you had been calm, subdued. You're probably drunk, yeah, but you were never excitable ever. And for you to get this excited over something, I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? I snap. Yeah. Well, I that snap. that's that's when you see the end coming. You know, when when you when you realize, holy shit, I'm caught. Yeah. You know, then you go into defense mode. Now there's nowhere. You're right. You can't lie to anybody because no, you've been lied to. You you're not. the world champion at liars at this point. At liar at this point. Oh yeah, they yeah. they actually call me a liar in an internal affairs interview. They're like, you're lying. We we got we we got you on, we got you we got you dead right. Mm. We know what you're doing. You know what? You said it to a doctor. You're done. I remember Doc Steph saying to me about you specifically: if you don't get some help or you don't retire, you're going to be fired. Right. That's what he said. He said that way before this, and. Um, so you go down to Florida House, you don't work the program, nah. you're not ready, you come back, and you just start tying it on. Oh, absolutely. I went right back to drinking. Yeah. And it probably was worse. Yeah. Yeah. At what point, well, what happened between your separation with the police department? You just, not for you, or they they don't want you no more? They don't want me no more. They, oh. they, they you know, we're fucking done with you. you no, right. you no second chance. No kidding. And how many years you had the pension system at this time? Fifteen. So... What what do you get something? I got I got my money out of the pension. Okay. You know. Your contribution? My contribution, yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, not the way you wanted to go out. No. You know what? I got I I thought I had friends there. Yeah. You know. Don't hear from anybody. So l- let me ask you this question because I I've seen this where we we try to help somebody get to get to the right facility, get to the right help and and they become so resistant that at some point they have to go, I can't do this no more because you're drowning and you're going to drown me with you. Do you think that's what happened to them? Are they really, were they were they trying their best and they just didn't know what to do? Sort of give up out of frustration? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, see, I mean, could, that could be another thing too. Shit rolls uphill. So if his supervisor knew he was fucking up, then the supervisor could get in trouble too if their supervisor didn't oh, come yeah, down. Oh, yeah, I had the supervisor take a hit for me. Mm. You know, I had one, I wanted them to write me up. And they said, I'm not, you know, they took the head, I'm not writing them up. So they mm. took the head. Really? You know, I was putting someone else's job in, in jeopardy. And how did that make you, did, did anything click in the back of your head? It's like, wow, you know, these guys are taking a hit for me. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. I, I felt bad. I was like, look, you didn't have to do that. I would have took the head. You could have wrote me up. It was for 
I don't know what it was for, but um, probably had something to do with alcohol. Probably, <laughs> but but on you know being an alcoholic, they say it's an awful selfish thing too. So you kind of felt a little remorse, but it was like, hey, well, at anything, least it ain't me. any addiction, any addiction or trauma. What I've recently come to understand, I understand it about myself. It creates a a, a very narcissistic behavior in you. Mike has it. I have it. You probably have it. Oh, absolutely. Where the world revolves around you. You know, this is just my theory. I'm, 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 not, no, you. I'm not a medical professional, but the world revolves around you. It's like, well, this person doesn't want to go out to the bar with you. Well, fuck them. They're ruining my good time. That's how, that's how it's, you, right. you perceive it. You know, people didn't call us. Fuck them. Well, they didn't know what to say. How many times you you say, hey, you want to go out to the bar? And guy's like, no, I'm not going to go. You pussy. Right. You know? right, right, right. Would your wife say you can't go? <laughs> you going to be a quitter? <laughs> so you get back, you keep drinking. How bad did it get? It got bad. I mean, it wasn't working. Mother passed away. 2020, my father passed away from COVID. That That hit me hard. So... That was the two-year mark. I just went downhill. And how deep did you go? I went deep. And June 1st, I uh, woke up, finally shaking. Finally shaking, vomiting. DTs? DTs, fucking puking out my ass. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Literally and figuratively. Right. Christine was at work. <clears throat> She's calling me all day. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm mm. fine. Nothing to worry about. She's like, did you take your medicine today? I was like, yeah, I took it. I'm good. She comes home. She looks at me. She's like, what the fuck happened to you? You look like shit. It's like, I feel like shit. I tell her what's going on. I go to the spare bedroom, lay down. I'm tossed. I'm turning. I can't get comfortable. I'm up. I'm puking. I'm heading to the bathroom. Finally, she needs to go to the hospital. I go to the the Redneck Hospital where I live, <laughs> and uh, I walk up the registration right away. They're like, "You're going to DTs." Mm. It's been five days. It's been a total fucking loss of fucking consciousness. When I, when I went to rehab, they brought a guy in who was, I think they they he blew like a three eight. All right, so he was, but well, he he walked dead. He walked in. Oh, like he walked in. I walked in. Yeah, at three eight, he walked in, and I remember. Walking past his room, and they were they had him on, they had him on Klonopin. So the pills of Klonopin are point fives. Right. He was taking, I think, someone told me three point five or four, or point or uh, four point oh of Klonopin. That's a lot of Klonopin, and he was you could see it because they they had to keep the door open. So he's tossing and turning. I never went through detox. Like I, I didn't. I, I I sobered up. I went into the facility sober. So I didn't go through that. I didn't understand that. But I'm watching this guy go through DTs, and the smell of alcohol coming out of the room right. was overwhelming. Was that you? Oh, Yo, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, she, she left my cell phone. And I called her up. She don't remember this. She tells me a story. I called her up and go, where are my fucking sneakers? <laughs> I'm looking for my fucking sneakers. She's like, you're not, you're not leaving the hospital. Mm. She's like, you got to be there. If you, don't, if you don't stay there, you're going to die. She's a paramedic, so she knows the signs. She knows what to look for. Is she drinking, too? I mean, does she... She, she still oca- drinks. Occasional? Okay, social. Yeah. You know, we, we still go to the bar mm. to eat. You have that beautiful near beer, right? Oh, fucking sucks, man. <laughs> Hi, Heineken. I love my Heineken, but, man, you got to do something about your double zero. <laughs> he, he actually, he, you did send out a group text yeah. the other day. <laughs> sitting here so drinking like, my fake beer. <laughs> sitting here drinking my fake beer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... You're 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 going through this detox. Take you five days. What did it feel like that first moment that you were clear? Oh, I was like, what happened? Mm. It's like, I was like refreshed. Mm. It's like, where am I? You really didn't know where you were. I had no idea where I was. <laughs> I I remember walking into the hospital. I remember walking into the ER, and then from the ER to the private room. No clue. No clue. And you had no clue for the next five days. No, I, didn't, I couldn't remember if I even ate those five days. <laughs> Probably didn't. You, you, they, they have to keep you on 24 hours surveillance. Right. They have to make sure you're medically okay because once you hit that facility, you're their responsibility. Right. right. Yeah, so <laughs> did the staff come up and give you? Oh, man, I was talking to people. I mean, I was talking to dead people. I was 
I asked the nurse about my dead brother. My brother's been dead two years. Oh. I was I was asking, I was like, hey, you know, where's my brother Brian? And my girlfriend fiance comes back and they're like, Who's Brian? Like, That's his brother. He's been dead for two years. Oh, was, yeah, he was asking wow. about him. Holy cow. That's yeah. crazy. So what changed after you, you went through detox? What changed? 